guys and welcome back to the last part of the desert temple um t building tutorial i guess i don't know really what to call this series just yet but um yeah so what we're going to do today is work on the loot table and put together the actual script i'll explain how the block in the dungeon works for basically getting the structure to spawn below it and um, basically some tips and stuff. So uh, the first thing that we actually need to do is create our loot table. So we're going to do that right now and we're just going to select uh, under our mod elements page and then go to uh, L for loot, loot table and then I'm going to call it something like our um, desert uh temple loot and this should be good enough and then what we're going to do is we're going to just create some different um things here some different items that can basically generate in here so i'm going to set this to basically have a random number between uh one to four for your generation and that's going to select anywhere from uh, actually, let's do one to three, and that leaves only uh, two items that basically don't get added. So these will be our uh, junk items uh, for the actual thing. So obviously, we want to add some gunpowder. That's kind of like a junk item. Maybe some bones, because I'm sure creepers actually do have bones. I can't imagine any physical form not having any bone structure in order to actually stand up straight so that would be interesting if it didn't have any bones uh we can also add maybe some flint because uh flint and steel kind of thing and you can ignite creepers on fire and uh what else can we put in here we can put um uh let's see maybe some slime that's that's green like creepers as well and we might also want to put uh, something else in here. I'm not sure what. Maybe some sand because uh, sand is commonly found in the desert. So we can put some sand once I find it in the GY. It's somewhere in here. Uh, should be near gravel, I think. That's where I remember. Yeah, right there. Right there. All right. So we'll select that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set our minimum count and our maximum count. I'm going to set all the uh, the gunpowder to about two, and then I'm going to set the bones to about four. The flint can be a little bit higher, so we'll set that to eight. Uh, slime should be a little bit lower than that, maybe four, and the sand could probably be about sixteen. And we even might want to just have it 16 in straight across the board. So we'll set it to 16 and 16 for that. And um, yeah, that looks all good. All right. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to uh, set this to... Actually, this would be a good time to actually demonstrate uh, the mod namespace thing that we're basically going to work on. So let's uh, set this to our chest. Uh, basically a chest um, loot table type and then we're going to use our mod namespace so we're just going to use the one that's in our mod and that should be desert underscore temple desert underscore build so right up there we can also get our namespace from the workspace and then open workspace settings and then it will be located under the mod namespace slash id so we'll grab that and we'll save that quickly and then what we can do is we can um just save this actually i forgot to do something we need to actually add our loot items so i'm going to select one or two loot items for the thing now i'm going to actually set this to a zero minimum roll and the maximum roll will be two i believe and then what we can do is we can set this to something a little more valued uh, for basically our loot. So maybe some diamonds. This can be ranging from um, maybe one to two different items. And then we'll have maybe some gold in here as well. Uh, we'll have uh, maybe a little bit higher amount. So maybe um, one to four, maybe two to four actually. And we can probably add some other things as well, maybe some iron. So iron, and we'll set that to 
maybe three to six. And then we'll set the last one to emerald. And then we'll set that to probably four, well, oh, that's five, four to eight. Yeah, we'll set that to that. So basically what's gonna happen is the this, this section is going to roll anywhere between one to three maximum rolls. And then what this is going to do is any time after that, so this is running separately, uh, it's going to basically roll anywhere between zero times to two times. So it has a chance of not generating any valuable loot or up to two different rolls, which will spawn either one of these basically one and another one of these items, maybe even the same item itself. So there's a chance that there can be a total of four diamonds for loot if you were to roll both diamonds. Uh, we could also adjust the weight if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it set to one so it's an even amount. So it's about 50% across the board. And then we're just gonna save that quickly. So the next thing that we need to do is actually go in game and set up the uh, give command so we can actually get that. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is open up a website, MC Stacker, C Stacker, and then I want 1.16 for the current build. Um, have to kind of search for it. I think I'll have to navigate a little bit. So if we click on the latest version, and then there is, if you're looking for an alternate version of MC Stacker, you can find it here, and then it'll have a drop down list, and then we want the 1.16 one. And after that, what we need to do is we want to actually give the player a specific item. So we're going to actually set this to chest. And then what we want to do is have the loot table and believe. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our mod here and I'm just going to quickly see what our loot table name is. So it's a uh, chest slash desert temple. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to put that in, I think. So we'll try that chests, chest, is it with an S after? I have to double check that. Yes, so chests slash, and then it is uh, desert underscore temple loot. So desert underscore temple loot. And then it should come up over here like so. Now, uh, what we want to do is if we're going to set it under our namespace, what we want to do is actually uh, set the um, namespace, I believe, to our namespace for that. So our namespace and then colon, and then it should come up like so. So we'll quickly take a look at see if this actually works. I'm not sure if it will. Uh, well, I might have to experiment around with it in a second, but we'll see if this actually this command actually works. All right, so we'll open up our building world. And then we'll quickly paste in the command and hopefully we will get a chest with our loot in it. And indeed we do. Okay. All right, so that seems to work. Um, now, what I'm going to do is just uh, print out a command. So basically what's going on here is we're using the give command, and then we're basically basically giving them the nearest player uh, the chest, and then we're basically assigning the loot table. And then under the loot table name, what we're doing is we're basically going with our loot table uh, or our mod ID or namespace. So desert temple under, or this is basically our, everything from this point to, 
see if I can select it. So everything from here to here in our loot table type is basically our namespace. And then we're basically setting the loot table registry name. So in our case, it was chests and then slash desert temple loot. And then we're just basically giving the amount over here of the player to one chest. So that's basically what's going on in that particular part. So now that we have a chest that we can actually use, uh, we're gonna replace these ones in here with the loot table ones. Uh, remember not to open the chests. If you do, you have to kind of break the entire chest system. So if we were to open this up, then what we would have to do is basically break it, place down our chest again with the loot tables. And what this will do is it will make sure that the loot stays uh, random. If we open it, then the loot is generated and we can't actually, uh, it will be the, the same loot for that particular chest every time. But as long as there is a loot table uh, part in here, then it's not going to basically um, generate every time. Now, the only thing that I have left to really do is figure out, like, I'm not sure if the TNT will explode if we hook up all the different types of um, tripwire hooks. So I'm going to just quickly test this theory. And I'm going to go over here far enough away from our build so we don't actually trip the, uh, the thing. And I'm just going to place a few of these like that. And then I'm going to just set it up like we would with the string here. Okay, so it doesn't look like it will actually trip when it's um, actually done until we break it or trip it. In that case, that will happen. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly link up this part. And hopefully we won't get in the way where it will... Okay, I'm just going to go over here. Okay, that... Try not to trip the wires. Okay, there's that one. We might have to break underneath uh, the structure so I can easily get out. Okay, that's hooked up, that's hooked up. Having a hard time getting in that uh, part right there, there. Okay, so I'm just gonna look at the parts and that looks like it's all hooked up. Hey, I actually just noticed something. So underneath, uh, you can see that this actually doesn't connect up to that. That's interesting. I wonder why it does that. Like this part doesn't link up to that part, oddly enough. All right, anyhow, um, let's just break underneath here and then we can fill that in. We'll just sneak out from underneath the build so we don't trip anything. And that's all set up. Uh, I just want to check one last thing. I thought I saw... Um, whoop. No, I do not want that. I want that. thought I saw a couple blocks right up here that was basically not set up. And I just want to fix that quickly. And then what this will do is it will basically... Um, if we were to leave it basically blue like this, what would happen is it would replace it with air. So I don't want that to happen. And the other thing that I want to do quickly is I reviewed the video and I actually know what was causing the, per se, the error around the structure. Now, I'm not going to fix it this time around, but um, one thing to note when you're actually creating terrain, uh, like the structure voids and stuff like that, is if you're basically building a structure that might have terrain differences around it, all the blue stuff, uh, all the blue dots right here will basically um, generate error. So what was happening in the test environment that we basically tried out our desert temple was it was basically flattening all the terrain up to this point, which I had it set to do. But then um, the terrain around it was basically getting filled in like that. So if you want to do more of like a realistic desert temple, uh, which it will take a lot more time to actually do and actually fix this. But 
uh, what you could do is replace all this error between the um, the structure up to this top part here. And what that will do is with uh, basically structure voids. And what that will do is it will um, take the error away. So it will be kind of buried when it actually generates, which will be kind of flow with the terrain and stuff. Uh, now, it will take a lot of work to actually do that because I have to kind of like carve out pieces like this and basically fill it in and go around the structure and stuff like that. So I'm not going to be doing it just per se this time. But um, just I wanted to note that in because uh, we did that with the other other build and it turned out really good. But it was also underground, right? So if you were to do this um, basically with the desert temple or of gra above ground structures that are pretty large like this, then you might want to consider basically bringing it up to at least uh, to a certain extent where it's like, at least about this high or so for until it reaches the top just so it's mostly buried and has some terrain uh, uh, variation where it can actually basically go between the different layers um, to kind of demonstrate this I'll try to carve out a few different sections and hopefully we can get that uh, set up a little bit so I'll just kind of bring this out to about here uh, you can see this is where the block uh, starts, and then I'm going to go over to here. I'm just going to bring this all the way up to here and remove all that. And then what I'm going to do is basically use the fill command, just erase all that, and then go slash fill, and then set whoop, uh, slash fill. I need to make sure that the block that I'm looking at is selected. So slash fill and then hit the tab three times and it'll generate the coordinates for that block. And then you want to hit control A and then control C and that will copy the coordinates. And then you want to go to your alternate block and uh, we're going to just actually go over one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go control V and then we're going to go one, two, three with the tab again. And then we're going to go Control C or Control A and then Control C. And then what we want to do is remove these two blocks. And then what we're going to do is go slash um, structure void and then replace. And then we want to go error. And what that will do is it will fill in that section with error up to that point. So I might as well finish the rest of the structure. I'll just pause it and then I'll cut back in when it's actually finished. All right, so to recap, uh, the block right here is basically the block that's going to generate the lower part right underneath this particular tile. So uh, all the air blocks down here are basically filled out accordingly to what needs to be air. Uh, the blue ones at least. The ones above are the ones that are going to be structure voids. So I had to actually carve out all this entire area with uh, some commands and some other stuff. But I basically filled out the entire area around the structure. So anything that will basically get put into this part will be... Um, Okay, there's one or two different things. I think this is where a button used to be. But yeah, basically all the red is where uh, structure voids are and they can be turned into any of the terrain that is around. Now, you just generally want to encase the structure with that. So if there is a um, terrain that goes over it, then it can kind of be buried a little bit. All right, so the only other thing that we have to do left is basically set up these um, dungeon parts with the trip wires. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, we need some regular um, pressure plates. We're going to place those down like that. And then we're going to go over here, place some down over here as well. And then we're good to go. So now we just need to save the structure, or both of them at least. And, uh, oh, I missed that part. Just going to fill that in quickly. Perfect. All right, let's just do a quick fly around the structure to make sure there's no other pieces. Looks good. All right, all right. So um, 
we need to go over here, we'll just set this as the um, structure, or basically our namespace, and then top, it doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it's um, unique to what it is. So this is the top of the structure, so we're going to save it like that. And then we're going to go over to this one, and we're going to save this as the bottom. Now I think the other one was supposed to be just top. I might have pressed S trying to move, so I'm just going to save that as top instead. And top, and then bottom, and then we're all set up. Alright, so now all we need to do is go back into mCreator. And I'm just going to minimize that. And we'll close out of this. We don't need that open anymore. All right, so the other thing that we have is the block itself. So what this block does is it uh, basically generates the structure. So I'm just going to go quickly through all this. And properties, properties don't really matter too much. The block has a one tick speed. So basically what will happen is every tick it will basically update. That's important for the system. Uh, we have no tile entity. And the only thing that we actually have is for the update tick. And what we're doing here is pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn the structure for the bottom piece. And what we're going to do is basically replace the block inside the structure, basically itself, because it's X, Y, and Z, to an air block and basically remove the keep state and keep mbt slash inventory. So what this will do is it'll just reset the current block that it's running from um, that was in the structure uh, for generating it to an air block as soon as it basically generates. So basically that's what's going on here. Uh, we still need to import our other models though. And the other thing that we're doing is the structure spawn conditions. We'll set that up in just a second. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go into our structures. I'm just going to delete these old ones that I have from testing. And then I'm going to import the ones that we basically had uh, just made. So our bottom and our top. And then we'll have that all set up. After which uh, we can go back to our mod elements and then we'll just quickly take a look at the desert temple. Um, on structure instance generated. So this is basically the procedure for that. Now what this is basically doing is we have two local variables, uh, pause x and pause z. What pause x and pause z does is it gets the current location of the access point of the actual structure. So the access point is always going to be the north, uh, let's see if I can remember this, northwest bottom corner. And what we need to do is basically increase the X and Z uh, coordinates. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, yeah, so the X and Z coordinates uh, for the structure. Now, because our structure is actually generating on a one block above the actual access point we have to offset the y axis to y plus one and then it's just going to do basically the entire uh structure layout another thing that we should i should know is we're testing for the 32 by 32. now i'm not sure how big the actual structure is but it's going to basically do a pain of uh, testing for a 32 by 32 area. Now obviously you want to make sure that it's roughly the same square size as your maximum size for your actual um, structure itself so it catches all the blocks but basically what this is going to do is uh, test for that entire area up here. It's going to test for the block that we want to basically update, uh, trigger to update and then what we're going to do is basically update slash notify block and then we're going to use the coordinates from our variables for x and z plus one for y 
And then what we're going to do is schedule tick update of block and then the same location. So if it finds it, then it's going to basically tr schedule the tick update and basically update and notify the block. Uh, this basically bypasses the structure's um, non-update tick setting. So basically, by default, any structure that generates will not uh, have ticks enabled. This system here will basically allow you to bypass that. Uh, if you wanted to test for the entire cube of the area, what you could do is add a position y uh, variable, uh, set the y variable to y here, and then what you would do is basically add a new repeater and then uh, set that on the outside of it. So you'd basically do something like this and then you would reset your two variables, your z and x up here, and then your y variable would be down here. And what this would do is basically it will repeat uh, for the entire uh, cubic area of the structure. But uh, we just want to test for the pane that is just on the access point, and then we're going to basically um, offset that plus one when we're actually testing. So that's all we're doing here, and uh, basically this bypasses the block from not ticking properly, and it will schedule the tick, and then it will spawn the structure. So now that we got this all set up, uh, we just need to actually get the structure generated itself. So we're going to go to spawn structure, and I am going to call it um, desert... Let's see, yep, desert, temple, and then we're going to just create structure, and then we want to spawn the top version. And I'm going to leave the default just to make it easier for testing. And we're going to leave these exactly to one. Uh, we do not want rotation. I don't know what it would do with rotation. It's probably best because I'm not sure if the bottom half is actually exactly centered with the actual structure or not. So I'm just going to offset or disable that so it's not like all cricket and stuff. And then what I'm going to do is, um, this is fine. So this will basically bury the block if um, it's located at a certain location. Now the one thing that I didn't do uh, before I started test, uh, came into the workspace was test how many blocks we need to actually offset the Y coordinate. So let's go back into the program and the test environment and we'll just quickly see uh, count how many blocks that we need to basically bring it to the surface level. Now we have that sub dungeon um, part underneath our main floor and what this will do is um, we have to offset that by that much. So we just need to count basically how many blocks until the floor level on the main floor and then we can basically calculate that uh, full instance of how many blocks we need. So let's go to the front of the entrance. This will be the easiest to actually see. And then we'll just count how many blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, and then the floor is on six. So we want to basically offset the structure down six blocks. So we'll just remove that, close that out, and then we will go back into our structure. And then we, what we want to do is go one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then that will offset it six blocks downwards. Uh, for the generation location, probably want uh, it set to surface because it's using surface, surface blocks. And we want to set the uh, biome generation to desert. So generally you want to set it to desert. You could set it to other biomes as well if you wanted to. I'm just going to select, actually, you know what, generally you just do that. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, the other thing is that procedure that has the repeaters and stuff, uh, we want to set that rate to on structure instance generated rate on this particular part right here. And what that will do is as soon as the structure generates, it's going to run that particular procedure. If we open it up again, just by editing it, you can see what it's going to do. So basically it's going to update the block in the dungeon. And then what it's going to do is basically schedule it to tick. And then it's going to allow the block, this particular block here to generate the tick. And from that tick, it's going to run 
the bottom half of the structure, so the blocks update tick. So it's going to generate this part of the structure and then it's going to replace itself with air. So that's basically how that's basically working and it should work still. I'm just going to save this structure and then we can move on to actually testing in game. All right, so let's quickly create a new world. We'll go into creative mode so it's easier to fly around and test things. And then we're just going to create new world and it should generate uh, some structures. Hopefully we're on the mainland. I hope we are because it's a lot easier to find them that way. If it's in the ocean, it's a little bit harder because it's at the bottom. Uh, not totally impossible, but uh, it will require status effects and stuff. So it looks like there is one right there. Uh, there's a few other ones. So we can actually go and fly around these and we'll actually see what's going on here. Uh, this one, I'm not sure why it generated like that. I guess it spawned in the actual hill and then it basically put that part down here. Uh, that's probably what's going on. Um, if we go over to these ones, we can actually see what it's going to look like. So this would be at the surface level if we go in here uh, there might be some blocks uh, that generate inside uh, just make sure that your um, parts are set up properly just disable that and looks like there's some water that got in from the stairs because of the uh, build there just gonna fix that water And then uh, we should be able to check down here. So let's just see if our creeper spawners are working. It looks like they are. And yeah, excuse me kindly. And as you can see, our bottom half of the structure is generating. We can actually even drop that. And I'm just going to squeeze into this part. And we're going to go straight down and in. And we'll check our loot. And it looks like it, the loot's all good. Trigger that. Ooh. Okay, not exactly what I was expecting. I was kind of hoping for the whole chest to blow up too, but that's fine. I'll try this one. Is this where the... No, I think we came in the that side, so we'll go in the other side. Oh, maybe... Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think our pressure plates were disabled from the other thing. Or not. I guess not. Alrighty then. That's interesting. All right, so yeah, that's basically how it generates. As you can see, it generates underneath that particular stronghold part, and uh, we might be able to find another example. So let's go into the forest, and we'll try to see if we can't find one that kind of blends in with the terrain a little bit. Uh, let's see. I want to find one that actually blends in with some of the mountains and stuff, so sometimes that will be the case. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to find. As you can see, it just kind of blends right around the um, actual tree line though. That's because I've taken the time to actually set all the structure voids to go around it and uh, basically just mined out the interior parts and that's basically allowing us to um, not worry about the um, generation. So I'm sure if we go down the stairs, disable these before any other creatures enable it. We'll go down the other stairs as well and just disable that. Okay, sometimes with the larger structures, uh, what will happen is the chunks won't fully load and at the same time, and what happens is the parts of the structures will actually generate as the default terrain. That's normal. I'm not sure why. Preloading the chunks will actually help a little bit and then spawning in the truck the structures, but um, that's a little bit for advanced tutorial and As you can see it's also down here. There's even some zombies down there as well Okay, so that's about it for the tutorial if you're new for the series Definitely consider subscribing. We'll be working on a new type of build next week so we'll be starting the building process all over again on something different. Um, 
I was thinking something a little bit colder, maybe uh, a log cabin or something like that. We'll just try something a little bit different than normal. Maybe we'll put, integrate some loot tables and stuff like that as well. So outside of that, uh, out, if you're new to my channel again, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.